everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you a black and white design which I love, which shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. But I'm going to go deep into different methods of applying chrome, some shortcuts and some ways that I have kind of found workarounds if you want to apply chrome in one area or another. I have multiple techniques going on in this video, there is lots of information so watch to the end if you've had any chrome issues. I hope you find this helpful and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye! Over my overlay, I'm going to take some white gel paint and I'm going to paint one side of my nail with white. This is on my thumbnail and I'm going to be using white gel paint. This will be our first little tip. So a lot of problems that I find with Chrome is that when you have too many coats and too many layers of things, built up, it gets to be very clunky. And if you use a gel color, then you have to apply a no wipe top coat or a chrome base. However, a lot of, of gel paints will cure with just the perfect inhibition layer to go ahead. And as soon as it's cured, you can go and burnish your chrome into it. They also, a lot of times only require one coat. So we've got one coat of gel paint and then the duochrome on that side. Now I didn't want duochrome over my black side of this nail. So I just painted the white side that completely eliminates the risk of getting chrome over the black. So then I can go through and I can paint chrome on the other side. So that's our first trick for getting that chrome exactly where you want it and just making the chrome work a little easier for you. I'm going to fill in that side. I and mean, I'm also still just using gel paint for everything at this point because it is just a little easier. And now I'm going to go back to my white gel paint because I do want to have that little rainbow um, ombre, neon ombre going down the center. And I'm going to create a white stripe down the middle. You can see the difference between the chrome and the white slightly, so it does make it so I have a nice border to keep my colors in. I'm going to start in the middle of that stripe and I'm going to place down my center color. I've got five shades, so I'm using kind of my tangerine orange and or like my like blood orange and then more of the like yellowy orange and then the neon yellow and then pink and then fuchsia going up towards the cuticle. If you use just a little bit of each, these are gel polishes, just a little bit on your brush and kind of gently blend them together works out really well. On my index finger that is going to get a full coverage of white and then the gel paint, I'm going to do the same process. Take my white gel paint, apply a coat. This one I did feel like it could possibly use a second coat and I didn't think that was the end of the world. So after I had the first coat on, I will go through and do a second coat. The other thing I love to do with these simple bold colors, white, black, any really intense color that has defined edges is I like to take a little brush and just trace around the outside edges to make sure that they are flawless. After it's cured, go ahead and burnish in your chrome powder again. It looks so beautiful over the top of the white. It's one of my favorite little combinations. And for this one, I'm going to be using a zebra print. If you are new to my channel, I love zebra print, which shouldn't be any surprise to anybody. I do also want to say, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Most of my videos, even if they aren't necessarily advertised as having a specific tip or trick in them, I do load them with all sorts of hidden knowledge. So if you are enjoying this one so far, please don't forget to click subscribe and introduce yourself. I'm Katie. Hi. <laughs> Otherwise, just go through with your black gel paint over the top of the chrome. I know a lot of people will say that your chrome will flake off or it'll make your nails chip or something. If you, if you noticed when I applied my gel paint, I didn't cap the free edge of my nail. Then when I go through and I add the details on top of it, I do cap the free edge just slightly. I just kind of brush down over the edge. Sometimes it's not even necessarily even visible the difference. Um, but like with this, I painted from the tip going up that will get just a little bit of extra gel on the very edge and it'll help keep that chrome powder from causing your top coat to lift and flake off. After I've got a happy amount of zebra print stripes going across this entire nail, I'm going to cure my chrome or cure my zebra print. And then over the chrome, I'm going to be adding a few sections of those neon colors. I've also seen where people are concerned about applying a gel color on top of chrome, saying that it doesn't stick. I think one of the biggest problems with that is that when you are burnishing your chrome into the surface of the nail, you don't use enough pressure. You just kind of gently swirl it on. What you really need to do is you need to put some elbow grease behind it and really, and really use some pressure to press the chrome powder into the surface of the nail and then remove the dust with a nail brush. Just a very soft nail brush is what you need. Now for my middle finger, I'm going to, I just did a clear overlay on my nail. So it's, you can see my nail bed more than I prefer. So I've got a nice, just nude color I'm going to paint over that. And then I'm going to take my white gel paint and I'm going to be painting the line that goes down the center of my nail for that same ombre stripe. And I'm going to do the first coat of my smile of my French tip that's going to be the white side that's going to have the chrome. So this is going to be just the one side. Now the gel polish I use to apply the color in the background of the nail 
will have a slightly tacky inhibition layer, which means that if you were to just you know, go through, grab your chrome and start to apply it over the top of this, it will pick up the powder and it won't pick it up in a very nice fashion. It'll look very, um, just too pigmented. So cleanse this entirely. Take some isopropyl alcohol and really, really, really cleanse it. The problem is now your chrome won't stick to your white either, but that's okay because I also want there to be some, a little bit more opacity to that one side. So I've got, this is where my chrome is going to go. I'm going to apply a second coat of white gel paint to just that area. So not to the full stripe, just to the white side of the French tip. Then burnish in your chrome powder. I don't know if you can tell the kind of the pressure and harshness I'm using to um, burnish that in and the chrome powder didn't stick to anywhere besides just where that second coat of gel paint went. So as long as you use isopropyl alcohol, 90%, you know, nice high percentage, then you should be able to just go ahead and do that. And it'll only stick to where you want it to be. I added my black side of the French tip and then going in the opposite direction. So I've got the yellow near the cuticle and the fuchsia purpley color at the free edge. I'm going to paint my little ombre stripe. Same process, however, starting in the middle then working towards the yellow and then kind of wiping my brush out and working towards the purple. On my index finger, I have a coat of that nude fleshy tone. And then I am going to use a coat of some chrome base because obviously that is a possibility. You can do that. We've got lots of different chrome thoughts going on throughout this video. When you do use a chrome base, make sure that you apply it in a nice, thin, very even coat so that it applies very, very smoothly with no blemishes. Any little blemishes, bumps, pieces of lint in the nail are going to show up tenfold once you have chrome on them. So you want to make sure that none of those are present. Over the top of my chrome, I'm going to take and apply half of a reverse French tip white. And then I'm going to apply the other half of it black. I will not be using any chrome over the top of that white. That's going to get my ombre treatment as with some of those other little flashy spots. So I'm going to take and just grab and add the ombre instead of starting in the middle for this one, because I didn't know for sure how it would go if I'd get all of the colors since it's a different shape. I just started with the color I wanted to be the most visible, which in this moment was the fuchsia. And then I'm going to continue bringing those colors down and around the corner kind of balancing it as I go you can kind of see how much space you have and apply enough space of each color so that they do look like they are appropriately filling the space once all of them have been applied go ahead and cure that again on the thumb we are going to use a holographic chrome which is black a hollow a black hollow chrome so pretty I'm going to apply a single coat of black gel paint because this whole gel paint under your chrome thing works for any color white black purple brown green whatever you've got it'll work as long as your gel paint cures without that inhibition layer and then I'm going to grab my holographic my black hollow color it's not really so much chrome as it is holographic little pigments and I'm going to press those in this one you don't want to rub it as much as you want to press after that's done dust off the extra and apply a layer of gel top coat. As you're applying the layers of gel top coat over the top of your chrome, this is one of those things you wanna make sure that you do kind of take the tip of your brush and drag it around the free edge of the nail. Because my nails are almond, I don't necessarily have to like do the tapping across or brushing across the free edge in a separate motion. I can just sort of swipe my brush right along and it'll catch those edges. And that's it. Cure them and you should be good to go. I love playing with Chrome and I love how there's different ways to really achieve the effects that you want. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I will be happy to answer them and I will see you all next time. Bye.